FM 100.3. Better music, better workday. Thank you for joining us on this week's edition of Utah Weekly Forum. I'm your host, Rebecca Cressman, and today our focus is on a very important event coming our way, which is the Utah Coalition Against Pornography, coming March 11th, Saturday, in Salt Lake. And so we're going to be talking to individuals who are not only overseeing it, but have had the vision of what UCAP is all about, therapist who is involved not only as a presenter, but has been working hands-on with couples and individuals dealing with addiction, betrayal, and pornography. So let me introduce to you Vana Davis. She's the executive director of UCAP. And Vana, thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure to be here, Rebecca. So as an executive director, you have that global view of the goals of UCAP. And how would you explain what those goals are? Simply put, I would say we're working to help people live happier lives free from pornography. And our main outreach is this conference, which this will be our 15th annual conference in Salt Lake. And we've done three down in St. George as well. And pornography has been pervasively being uh, integrated into people's lives more and more over the years. So 15 years ago, we had issues we were facing, and it just seems to have been magnified since then. Also joining us in the studio is Pamela Atkinson. We like to refer to her as one of the most... Uh, the strongest voices we have for those in need, our homeless advocate. But she's also been an advisor to three of our governors. She is the chair of the board of UCAP. And Pamela, why has it been important for you to have a leadership role with the Utah Coalition Against Pornography? I think um, like much of what I do, it's reaching out to um, help others gain information and understanding of what the issues are. And in this case, it's an issue that affects so many people. You use the word pervasive. It is so pervasive in the state of Utah. And what we've discovered is that an informed and educated person like a mother or a father can indeed help to prevent pornography encroaching into their family because they can communicate the knowledge they've gained to their children, even at a younger age. And what happens is the children become informed. They are not as curious about what they're seeing on their electronic phones, etc. And they, their curiosity is not as high as somebody who has not either had sexual education lessons at home or in school and who has no understanding of what are normal sexual relations. Their curiosity is very high. And when these pictures and words come up on their electronics, they explore further. And that's where addiction starts. Oh, I'm so glad that you gave us that overview and the idea that all of us are part of the solution if we are proactive. And speaking of solutions, joining us by the phone or over the phone from St. George is Jeff Stewart. He's a marriage and family therapist with a private practice that has been treating individuals uh, struggling with addiction and pornography and I use the term, and you used it earlier, Jeff, betrayal. And we'll talk a little bit about that because this is an intensely emotional addiction that affects not only the individual, right, who's addicted, but the spouse and the children. Is that yeah. true, Jeff? Absolutely. The myth is that this is uh, an addiction that just affects the person looking at it, um, and they believe that it's not hurting anybody else. But because it changes them, it changes the relationships that they're in. Mm. Now, the... The uh, title, or shall I say the theme of UCAP's conference, you mentioned it's the 15th, to me it caught my eye because there is a lot of shame, there's a lot of fear uh, involved and anger around pornography addiction. And yet the theme this year is the hope effect. Hope inspires action, sparks healing. Let's talk about why we wanted to have uh, the message of hope for UCAP. Vana. Right. So this issue has been so hard for people to talk about, you know, the silence, the shame, and the fear that go along with that have just allowed this problem to perpetuate and grow. And so our main goal is to get people to come and hear this talk talked about in a very open and honest and yet safe and hopeful and encouraging way. So we work really hard to make the conference hopeful. So we hear from our guests all the time afterwards that They weren't sure what to expect when they came. It may even be a little scary to come to this conference the first time. But they feel such a sense of community when they get there, and they feel very safe. Like it's a great place to learn about the harms, but the solutions, very practical solutions to the pornography problem. And so they 
They leave feeling like they can do something in their community, in their homes, preparing their children and really making a difference. I like that term solution because mm-hmm. when we're afraid of something and we feel like we're out of control, mm-hmm. we can have a couple of options, mm-hmm. which is we can react very emotionally from it or we can deny its existence. So when you start talking about solutions, it gives us a roadmap, right. Pamela. And I know you've mm-hmm. seen that in your advocacy for everything is the yes. importance of, an, of, of laying out the fact that there's a path mm. to recover and a path to prevent as well. I'm, I'm not frightfully sure that people understand how traumatizing addiction to pornography can be. And as Jeff mentioned, it's the whole family can be affected. And that, if that trauma is not recognized on the part of other people, it's very hard for people to have hope. It's, they feel betrayed by, by their spouse <clears throat> or even by their children. And there has to be solutions. If, if we don't say to people, there are solutions out there, we can help you and give them that hope, then they sink deeper and deeper into depression, the addiction gets worse, and that's so much harder then to step in and help. Mm. Um, speaking of solutions, Jeff Storer, thank you again uh, for joining us, our marriage and family uh, therapist uh, calling in from St. George. What, what solutions do you see? Pamela already brought up the solution of parents taking the initial steps to talk openly about pornography, its pervasiveness on the Internet and in their world. What other solutions do you see that will be discussed at UCAP? Well, there's a lot of solutions for, like she said, um, educators, families, uh, church leaders, and and that's one one large segment of of people that attend this conference. But there's also people that are personally affected by this, those who struggle with the addiction, their their partners who who have been betrayed by it, and their children. And the solutions that, that this conference provides is really just a tremendous amount of education, validation, and actual tools and resources to teach them how to change the way they think, ways to start uh, behaving differently, ways to understand what they're going through, and gives them very concrete solutions on steps they can begin taking, which may lead them to, you know, books or therapy or different kinds of group settings or other kinds of uh, longer-term resources. But it's a, it's a great place to come and understand the problem and then go out and actually have... Uh, very specific ways to start dealing with it. Does the understanding of Vana, the idea of getting information and getting education at an event like this, uh, why is that? Why does that help us in in approaching or uh, delving into the issues of pornography addiction? Why why mm-hmm. is it so key for us to have correct information? Right, people need to come and they when they're not confident about what they might the way they might talk about this issue, then they hesitate to talk. But when they come and here it talked about in very open, practical ways, then they can leave saying, oh, I can, I can say that. That makes sense to me. I never thought of it that way. And one of the great things about the conference is we really try to address all of the different needs of people who might come. We have four tracks, actually. So we, we, um, one track is addiction and recovery, helping people understand that. So in other words, as I attend UCAP, the one-day event, I can choose one track which will be focused on presentations in that area? Is that so correct? you can choose, okay. like we'll have um, breakouts on all of these issues and you can choose from any of them that, okay. that apply. But you, you have, have a number of need. workshops and presentations mm-hmm. about addiction and recovery. Right. Okay. And then also healing marriages or addressing betrayal trauma as we've been discussing. So helping partners who've been affected by their loved one's use of pornography. Then the third one is like helping parents... Other leaders who work with children and teens and even young adults, helping them understand how to prepare these young people to reject pornography. So we know that we can't protect young people from being exposed to pornography anymore, but we can prepare them so that they will not be affected in ways that cause problems in their lives. So they'll know how to react and respond in healthy ways to that. Yeah, and then we have a fine, another track, which is like looking at the social impact of pornography and what communities can do all together to work together to, to solve the problem. Is it now, are, are we at a point, do you see, Pamela, in, in a community or a society where we've accepted that our children from as young of, I, I don't remember the research, 
but it almost felt like to me that children as young as eight and nine Mm -hmm. on average are being exposed already to pornographic images. That's a huge generational change from when we were kids and when you were were a child. This is very different uh, obstacle that we're facing now. It's a huge obstacle because even if, if parents work so closely with their children and helping them to understand what they should and should not watch, on all of these pieces of equipment, including the the cell phone. We've got other kids who have not been taught that and who are very eager to share, and that is causing a lot of problems. But one of the reasons we know what to do with these conferences, uh, which um, subjects, which issues to bring up, is the feedback from the participants. When we had our first conference, there were just 200 people. But we've always insisted on people giving us verbal and written feedback. So when people say to us, you've you've just helped save our marriage, or somebody writes or sees me and stops me and said, my teenage son did not commit suicide because of what was I learned at your conference. And when, like last year, a number of teens came up to me and said, Pamela, we want sessions just for us without our parents. And much of this conference is based on the feedback uh, from individuals, from parents and from grandparents, from teachers, from social workers, have had an enormous impact on our discussion of who, whom do we invite and which issues are, are we going to address? And then people like Jeff, for instance, can say, this is what I'm hearing in my practice. This is something we really need to address in the next conference. Jeff, can you help us understand a bit of the psychological cycle of pornography addiction? Because I remember having a, an honest heart-to-heart talk with a woman whose husband was deeply addicted to pornography and she was feeling those natural feelings of betrayal but also shame and anger and fear. But once she understood that there was a physiological element that was feeding her husband's addiction, it helped her have a bit more empathy and to move towards hope and forgiveness. So could you take a minute, Jeff, and help us understand how is it that pornography becomes so um, cyclically addictive to a human mind? Yeah, that's a great question. The, the, the biggest challenge with this in terms of relationships is that it feels so deeply personal to those who are betrayed by it. And, and like you said, the more that they can become educated and understand that often this addiction preceded their relationship, their marriage, um, because the brain has been affected and it has nothing to do with you know, a woman not being enough or being compared. It's, it's really about dopamine and other brain chemicals that get hijacked and get released by the arousal from the pornography. And so really pornography becomes um, the drug, if you will, that activates the onboard drugs, the chemicals that we already have in our body. And so oftentimes people discover this connection accidentally when they're children or teenagers and the high that comes from that, the, the, the pleasure, and really the, the numbing and the relief from difficult emotions, stressful situations, and other life challenges, um, the pornography then becomes a way to regulate emotions and regulate the body. And like any, any substance or addiction, it escalates and becomes difficult to put down because the brain is very efficient and does not forget where you're going to receive the greatest relief. And so over time that builds and builds, and then you add secrecy, you add hiding, you add, you know, the, the kind of the rush of the, of the forbidden or seeking out something you know is, is not okay, but you can't stop doing it. And then you end up creating more consequences, and then eventually, you know, it's, it's by that time it's unmanageable, it's out of control. And what we find that damages relationships the most, there's a few things. One is that the user of the pornography is um, really shutting down their brain and their ability to feel, to be able to think ahead, to regulate impulses, to have empathy, and it changes uh, sexual preferences. It affects the way they see themselves and they see other people. Um, It creates isolation. It creates depression and anxiety and shame. All of those things change the individual so that they're hard to be in a relationship with. And then, of course, when their partner learns that they've been involved in this secretive behavior, that they've been looking and getting turned on sexually by other things, 
it creates a lot of um, betrayal for for a couple of reasons. One is that, of course, they're turning away and you know accessing stuff that really affects the intimate bond between them and creates comparisons and such. But but almost just as importantly, the fact that there was a secret life going on that was kept from the partner is so devastating because it basically says you hid this from me, you were doing something that we agreed you wouldn't do, and now I don't even know if my life, you know, is even true or not. You know, have I been living this lie with you this whole time? And it's so devastating to realize that you've been duped. And so couples have so much to work through when that comes up um, as a secret behavior in the marriage. So it affects the individual, it affects the couple, and it affects the individual partner who's been betrayed. So it's really messy, and there's a lot of pieces that have to come together for a, a family to heal from this problem. I sure appreciate right. that detailed description. That was fantastic. And for those who just joined us, that is Jeff Stewart. He's a marriage and family therapist and also on the board of the Utah Coalition Against Pornography. The big event this year is March 11th, and we're talking about the theme, which is the hope effect, and that as a part of working towards hope and recovery, we have to first step back and understand the addictive cycle of pornography and how it affects every area of our lives. Also joining me in studio is Pamela Atkinson. She is the chair of the board. She's also been an active advisor for many of our governors here in the state of Utah with her finger, or shall I say her heart, uh, in the pulse of the issues affecting our community. Also joining us is Vonna Davis. She's been the executive director of UCAP for a number of years seeing the big picture of what we need to. From listening to what Jeff just explained to me, Vana, it, um, it helped me understand why it was so important for you to have uh, so many workshops, so many tracks, because mm-hmm. I'm hearing as a woman, whether I'm, you know, and women can be addicted to pornography as well, so I'll just make a generalization. For a woman or a partner whose spouse has been addicted, there will be workshops that address their own recovery. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. And many women or and partners and even people who advise them don't really understand that partners who have experienced betrayal need healing of their own and that we have lots of resources for them. One of the great things about the conference is we have like 40 exhibitors. So people can connect with these people who have services to offer and leave with some tools that they can can use and and as I listen to Jeff, like I, I love this thought that um, is so powerful to me that porn gets in your head and turns off your heart. Mm. And understanding that, you know, helps us to see that, you know, it really affects everyone because it changes the way people treat each other, which is the, the most important thing. And so we're working to help people see how they can overcome that and you know turn their heart back on and i have loved being in this issue and meeting the many people who have found recovery and the joy and the they're so eager to share their story and help other people find healing and recovery and the peace that comes through that and being able to leave that the dark place behind it's been really wonderful it's interesting you said Turns on the brain, turns off the heart. Mm-hmm. Porn, porn gets in your head and okay. turns off your heart. Right. And mm-hmm. then you mentioned, uh, Pamela, um, the, about shame and uh, earlier in our interview. And, yes. and shame is so powerful because what it can do to someone who is addicted is it can say, I'm no longer uh, worthy. I'm no longer good enough to love. I will never be able to get over this. And so I am going to give hope up hope on myself as well. It's a powerful, powerful, destructive tool. And, and yet that's why it's so important for us to speak openly about mm-hmm. the solutions for recovery. And I'm sure you've been involved in that, those discussions as well, Pamela. Um, absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I think that um, people exhibit shame in a variety of ways. And sometimes it comes out more boldly than in others. But the experts know when somebody's experiencing shame, and we all know that shame can lead to um, suicide. And that's why this education is so important. We feel very strongly that not only young men, but young women should be educated on the dangers of pornography. 
if young men get into pornography and get addicted and they start dating young women and these young women have not been educated or informed, they're very confused at first and then they eventually become so ashamed of what is happening to them. But they have not been taught about the dangers of pornography, what it can lead to, what it actually is, what it does to the brain. I mean, we have the MRI scans to show the dopamine being released when people are watching um, uh, the, the pornography. But so many young people today, they're skipping the soft porn. They're moving directly to the hardcore porn, which becomes violent. And that's what's been happening in some of the, the dating that's taking place. And it, it takes the young women completely off guard. They're not prepared for this. They haven't been taught about it in family, in schools, or even in, in their churches. And that's why we encourage not only the parents, but the teachers and the church leaders. The youth to leaders, attend. right, yes. sure. To attend. For, for instance, my church, the, the youth, unfortunately, on this day of the conference, they, they've got something out of town, and this was planned months ago. But the pastors have contacted the parents and are helping the parents choose which breakout sessions would be helpful for them with their teenagers of different ages. Fantastic. You're an elder in the First Presbyterian Church. That's, That's exactly the church right. that yes. you're referring to. Anyone mm -hmm. involved? I also appreciate, I know we have just a few minutes left, but there was a, an impression that was left with me when, when you're all talking, and that is the difference for young marrieds now, uh, because the chances are that they are starting their marriage already with one or two of the partners having been exposed to, if not soft porn, but hard porn as well. So, so Jeff, that puts those marriages at a different emotional risk than maybe generations past. Are you seeing that? Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I actually choose to, to view it. I, I don't want to downplay the risk of it, but what I'm seeing is that when couples are having honest conversations about this, when they're dating and engaged, it actually opens up a tremendous opportunity that couples of years past would have, would have never had, which is to be honest and real and vulnerable and to combat uh, lies about themselves and about each other and to come out of hiding and to live with more transparency and visibility. And that creates more intimacy. And so I think that younger couples today are having conversations that their parents and grandparents never would have had and um, or maybe would have had in years down the road after a crisis. And so if these couples can catch it early and, and start talking about these issues and asking good questions about their own use and their own experiences with it and how they feel about it and how it affects them, then it's not only preventative for their own relationship, but it opens up other ways of just being more emotionally intimate with each other that will benefit them as, as they have children and as they, they uh, you know, work to, to serve and, and help out in their communities. I appreciate that. We're almost out of time, and I did want to give Vanna an opportunity. Again, that was Jeff Sturr, our marriage and family therapist on the board. We just heard from Pamela Atkinson as well, the chair of the board. Vanna, the executive director. Uh, let's go back to teens for just a minute because it caught my eye that there will be uh, fight the new drug sessions for teens. So mm -hmm. you said teen specifics can right. go attend at moms and dads and will not be in the room, right? Right. Okay, safe place. There will also be a panel of tech experts, which I think any individual, parent, youth leader, uh, young adult, whoever you are, would want to be able to have a chance to hear. The, are these tech experts going to be talking about prevention? Right. How mm -hmm. to use technology, filtering, parental controls, a little bit about apps to be aware of. We actually have some also uh, some tech savvy experts who will be available to work one on one with people if they just want to bring their phone or their wonderful iPad and just say, hey, hey, what do I do with this? Fantastic. I remember actually having a son bring me his phone and saying, can you make this stop? Right. Oh. <laughs> because it's no longer an issue of going and finding something. It comes to you, which is why we need to be informed and assertive and open and honest together. I am so pleased to have been joined today by Jeff Stewart, Pamela Atkinson, and Vonna Davis. We're talking about UCAP, Utah Coalition Against Pornography, the 15th annual conference coming up March 11th. It says register at utahcoalition.org. Is there a limit, a, a cap for how many people can register, guys? No, we can have as many. We don't turn anyone away. We have the room. Uh, we started off with 200 the first year. This past year, we had just over 3,000. We, we've we made it $16 per registration, $6 for students, because we want 
people to be able to afford it. So wow, we have six dollars for students. Yeah, so mm-hmm. we have it underwritten. By some generous funders. That's Rebecca. fantastic. So register at utahcoalition.org. The location mm-hmm. of UCAP this year? It's at the Salt Palace. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for sharing not only your insight, but your passion and your advocacy as our community fights uh, pornography together. Again, thank you for joining us. Pamela Atkinson, Jeff Storer, and Vonna Davis with UCAP. FM 100.3. Better music, better work day.